Hello boys and girls, lads and lassies, sorry about that, the system just went bang as we went live I don't even know if you can hear me at the moment, so if you can hear me, put something in the chat While I try and get my camera Right Can you hear me? See if I can get the camera working now The camera's working. Hello boys and girls, lads and lasses and welcome back and sorry about that. Try to actually be a wee bit smart and what happens? The new mic blew the system. So I just feel a wee bit underdressed for tonight's show. <laughs> I'm on my toad and look what happens. Just goes to show how I need people. But there you go. So I'll set my camera back up a wee bit. And 
hopefully that's all better. So thank you for joining us and we're talking about Some Like It Hot. Very gangster movie and I must admit it is one of my favourites. It actually, it's got some great stars on it. Marlon Monroe, Jack Nicholson, uh, Jack Nicholson, uh, Jack, uh, <laughs> I'm a wee bit flustered as you can see. Because the system blew. Marlon Monroe, Jack Lemon, Tony Curtis, George Raft. You know what I mean? How's that for a group? The names may be. I'm actually going for Spats Jack in it. So there you go. So just call me Spats for tonight. But I'll try and calm down and have a wee bit of iron brew to soothe my nerves. Terrible. So, how's your new mic sound? This is what blew the system. New mic. Tested it, worked fine. Switched it on. Just as I went live, I just took, I was taking the camera off. Um, but I put the camera on and with the camera and the new mic, it just went bing. And that was me going. Perfect timing. So... And now the dogs are going off in one. They must have found the bodies under the floor. But, so, some like it hot. This is one of my favourites. Yeah, I need a Miss Money Penny. I think I actually need a, a Daphne and a Josephine. But, different stories. I did say to my wife I was actually going to dress like this and she says it would be more appropriate if I wore one of her dresses and one of her wigs. And I says, nah, that's Saturday. But that's a different story. So, are the dogs louder? Right, so it's this new mic. Is, turn the mic up. How's that for, that's the echo. I can turn the echo all the way up, but the mic should be fine. So I'm hoping it's actually not picking up ambient noise. So, thank you for joining us again. Right, since I'm on my Todd, and if you can hear me, if you can hear me, let me know. Or if you can't hear me, or if I'm quiet, I'll mess around with the system. So... My favourite part of this movie, I'll start there. Favourite part is with Daphne and, oh, what's, his, what's the character called? It is Osgood. Osgood Fielding III, Joey Brown. Their date, from their date onwards, right at the very beginning, their date with the dancing when he comes back with a cha 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 and then how he falls and falls for him and then just even at the bit at the boat ride at the end I can't have children oh we can adopt I'm I'm dude eh, nobody's perfect to me that small story inside the the larger love story between uh, Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe who is at her hottest in this one. No denying it. But this is some good stuff. George Raft, typical gangster um, part he played. He's played a lot of good gangsters in them all. And I must admit, the whole all-round story if you actually describe it, it's ridiculous. These two guys, musicians, during the Roaring Twenties, during Prohibition, witness a murder. And to hide, they dress as women and join a band. And then the two of them not fall for the same girl, but the fast talker starts pretending he's a millionaire where the other one falls uh, falls for a, a millionaire who thinks he's, he's a, a real woman. And then they all find out that 
one isn't a millionaire. Not about not only she not a woman, he's not a millionaire and she's fine with it. And the other one finds out the, the millionaire finds out the other guy, the other one isn't a woman, and he's fine with it as well. The basics of the story sounds ridiculous, but the 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The execution of it was superbly done. You got four, well, I would say five, counting Joe, uh, uh, Joe E. Brown. And even if you call, uh, count Pat O'Brien as the, the flat foot, the copper, there was six, but four really good actors in this. And I think this is one of Marilyn Monroe's greatest performances. I've seen a few of Marilyn Monroe's, and some of them are good, some of them are not, but this one, I think she just nails it. She plays the naive blonde bimbo with the heart of gold and a good singing voice. But she certainly shows her assets in this movie, which we cannot deny that at the time when this was released, what was it, 1959, this was classed as a sex comedy. Nowadays, it's very light. It's not sexual as the way we would perceive a sex comedy. You look at nowadays, a sex comedy would be like American Pie, where it's a lot more graphic, ruder, and nakedness all over the place. And this... It is quite light-hearted humour. But there is some adult themes. They talk about sleeping around. They talk about loose morality. And yes, the of its time, I think, even them stoting around with their underwear, their, their, their night dresses on, their and just, it was classed as a sex movie, or a sex comedy, but it was just so well done that you can see why this movie has got such a following. How many people have actually um, turned around and says, well, some like it, oh, didn't really like it, didn't really like Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis was not as good, Jack Lemmon has done better. I think all of them played the part so well. So I'm actually going to look at the chat and see if there's any questions. So if I'm looking that way, it's just because I'll need to move the chat to that window so I can actually see it better without me actually constantly turning sideways. So maybe... Right, there you go. So... Let's look at the chat. Any any comments? Any anything you like about it? I know I see not Brian. It's his, one of his fam, his favourite comedies of all time. And yes, the start of this, I'll need to trim that part out where it just went. Oh, bummer! Right, so let's see. Is it the Scottish voice? Yes, Miss Moneypenny. Your name's Bond, James Bond, or Brooke Bond, or as Russ Abbott used to say, Basilton Bond. But you didn't miss anything that <laughs> you did. Being late was probably the best thing that happened in this stream because it started off eh, a wee bit weird. Technology is a wonderful thing. I'm glad I don't work with it. Oh, wait, I do. Bummer! I think I'm going to have to take my new camera, my new mic, outside and show them what spats do to things that get on his wicks. Yeah, I, I just rewatched it again just before. I'm hoping to do some clips of it, but... I know it might be a wee bit tricky. A, 
copyright. B, some of the, because of the way it was uh, filmed, at, uh, yes, in black and white, but some of the scenes just looked a wee bit sexualized, so you know fine well it's going to have certain parts. And then there's the music. The part she does, the Betty Boop uh, uh, song, was superb. I would like to get that one clipped. So, and hi, Peter. Thanks for joining us. But, what's it saying? Some like it hot off, open to critical and uh, commercial success. And it is, I think it's definitely one of my top 10. And considering Calamity Jane's on that list as well, and as for comedies, Oh, there's a few comedies I would say are greater. And there's one or two gangster movies. But one of these days I'll actually do a, I'll do my top ten and actually talk about each of the movies. But different genres. For comedies, it is definitely, I would say it's probably second or third on my list for comedies. She, she's sexy in this. She looks absolutely superb. In 1927, the Prohibition era, Chicago Joe is a jazz saxophonist played by an, an irritable, impulsive ladies' man. His anxious friend, Jerry, is a jazz double bass player. Yep. And the two of them played it so well. The first part, I must admit, it, it stuck with me was the cops were in arresting everybody at the speakeasy. And as they're actually, oh, the, the police are crowding everybody. The two of them just walk past them and go upstairs. It's almost like, I wonder why the police let them go. <laughs> I think this is one of those ones. Some like it, spot. Enough of that. Let's see. No, I think Curtis and Lemon played that well. You know how they knew they had got the the parts right? Is they tried out different makeups and stuff like that, and they wanted to check to see how realistic they looked and how passable they would be. Not realistic, how passable they'll be. They actually got all done up, togged out the lot and went down to the, not the ladies' toilets, they went down to the ladies' uh, powder room because at that time it, in the studios they had a place and the ladies would go, not only they made they would do for powdering up and stuff like that, and they went in there and sat and chatted to some of the ladies and the, um, some of the other actresses and stuff like that, the extras, just to chat to them. And they says not one person actually clocked who they were. And as soon as they came out, they says, spot on, we can pass in these parts without it being too obvious. Like you look at it now, what was that one? White chicks? That one where the two guys dressed as the two girls and they had all the, the pl plastic makeup on and stuff like that just looked a wee bit too much. Whereas you had Mrs. Doubtfire, because he was aging himself, you could get away with that. But still, I think it shows that then it was done with makeup. Nowadays, they don't use makeup to do that. What they do in the films and that is use prosthetics. To, to actually enhance or change the features and obviously you can see how it works better with the makeup and it just goes to show what a good makeup artist can do with anybody because you can't say under any circumstances Jack Lemon looks like a nice looking woman but with the makeup you can understand why Osgood fell for him or her so what's this 
Oh, watching it, uh, thinking about it from memory. Yep. Yep, George Raft, Edward G. Um, even some of the the his lawyers, like Mike um, Mazurki, Mazurki, he played, he was, he always played the gangster or the gang, they, they basically had that to a face. There was a couple of the gangsters that their faces were just, you could understand why they were cast as gangsters, because they just looked that the ugly mug. It is this. It is it's one of these movies you could watch over and over again. I can't remember any of the scenes where she played the uke. Yeah, there was the one, um, one of the first scenes, which is a superb scene. It is the one just, it's the first music together when they're all practicing. They're all practicing. She, she sings and dances in the train car while they're doing the practice. And it was really good. That was the time. It was just not long after, because the two boys said they'd come from a conservatory, so they all thought they were fancy, and they were playing it quite slow. And they were asked to jazz it up a bit, and that's when they when they jazzed it up a bit. That's when she played the look and and the uh, uke and started singing. And um, what she had to even realise. I didn't re Well, actually she yeah, she was actually one it, you notice a lot of the the other extras was when they were having the party in Jack Lemon's cabin, which calling it a cabin, it's one of the beds, you know. I mean they always show the old ones where it was his beds two rows and you basically they slept in it and they were all climbing in there. there was about seven or eight of them in this one wee cubicle which was a bedroom so yeah she may she would have been in that i must admit i didn't even notice there's parts of it yes i would say they're very sweet however to each other they're not as sweet. They're sweet to people around them. But you look at uh, Curtis, he was a gambler and he was constantly trying to, like, for instance, um, when Jack Lemon says he needed to go and get his tooth done, uh, Tony Curtis says, oh, you're going to be selfish, are you, because we've borrowed money from this, uh, these the, the girls in the, the dance troupe, we own we're rent, we owe the dry cleaners, we owe the uh, the restaurant that we've been eating at, all that money, and he says, okay, we'll pay some of them off. He says, no, just give it to me and I'll take it to the track and we'll, we'll 10 times our money because it's running 10 to 1 and it's a sure thing, which they lost. Then the next thing, they actually look at their jackets, try to get their jackets. Um, they says, but we'll get 20 jackets and it lost again. And then they was talking about actually um, putting their instruments in the thing it cost, it gave them a living they were talking about putting that in because he wanted to gamble because he always thought he was going to win so to each other, they weren't as nice they were just basically two people who just seemed to get on but there was still the bickering backwards and forwards And yep, and that's exactly what I said. Just makeup, no prosthetics. It's just it looks a lot better. Aye, that's right. He was a professional wrestler, but he he's a really good one as well. Some of the movies he was in, he he always just played the gangster. Even the the comic the comical ones, he's he, he either played a wrestler in them as well. Did he not play the wrestler in one of the Lauren Hardy ones? Oh, no, it was a boxer, I think, with, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure. Yep. 
but he did play, he played some really tough, brutal characters as in Machine Gun and, and all that, basically he was a gangster, but he also played in some comedies where he, he played into his thuggish look, and it was near Lauren Hardy, was it not Charlie Chaplin? He did, he did some with Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, um, the, the, it was definitely doing the Cary Grant voice. And I think they would have been, it would have been better if he'd actually not got a glasses from someone who was obviously so blind, because you see the part where he's actually putting them down to see the girls on the beach. But after that, he's looking through them as if they don't really affect him. And it just sort of, took that away. If they'd just got a pair of glasses that somebody was just using them for reading glasses and it didn't imply that the guy was so blind that he could hardly see without them, then he's wearing them in the thick glasses and then he was acting as if he, 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 he could see no problem. But that's these type of things that you notice, but at the time it's superb. Yep. And he, same idea, he played in a lot of the ones. He always either played the cop or um, a, or a fed or something like that. He always played those type of characters. <laughs> we had a name like O'Brien, of course. He was actually a, a Scottish descent. But anyway... As you know, the my favourite part of it, I've said, is the Daphne and Osgood relationship and silliness and that. But I, I loved the best in this by far is Marilyn Monroe. I think it's one of her finest performances. Marilyn actually just oozes sex appeal. She oozes talent because the singing she she's got very she's got a few very humorous songs and you, you can just see when she's singing and dancing up and down the aisle she's having it looks like she's having fun and just putting it all out there and then when she's been told that her the love she's actually her new beau as she calls him has left her she goes into that very sad phase and a song is just so telling and so melancholy. It is just superb. To me, if I had to put all Marlon's movies out there, I would put this at the top of the list. I think Marlon shines in this movie. And yes... She, Due to the, the calibre of actors around her, it basically brings it a better performance because you look at Jack, uh, Jack Lemon. I think he brought out Tony Curtis's better performance, but I think Tony Curtis brought out Jack Lemon's better performance because Jack Lemon's done some absolutely fantastic stuff. But can you imagine Daphne and Josephine played by two different actors or anyone. Like, if you take Josephine out there, right, and you've got Jack Lemon, you put in Walter Matthau, it wouldn't have been the same for obvious reasons because Walter Matthau's a more... He's got more looks, more like minds than like a Josephine. But um, you put him with any other actor of the time, I don't think it would have worked. Let's just say Dick Van Dyke. You imagine Dick Van Dyke playing the Daph uh, the Josephine role. I don't think the two of them would have had... And, and Dick Van Dyke's a really good comedian, but I can't see the two of them having that same type of chemistry. I think the chemistry between Lemon and Curtis actually worked and, and complemented each other. And the same idea. I think their chemistry obviously rubbed off and actually improved Marlon's role. But then again, I think their role got improved for the simple fact is they've got 
spats in there. You know what I mean? It's just when you're looking, when you're working with people like George Raft and Jack Lemon, you're you're going to try your hardest. You're going to actually try and make sure you're knocking it out of the park. And I think it just looked amazing. Jack Lemon, yeah. And I can't deny, Matt, uh, Walter Matto and Jack Lemon playing in the odd couple, playing in um, Grumpy Old Men were fantastic. Some of their early stuff as well, they did some other stuff together, which was really good. I think it could have worked with the two of them because of the chemistry they had together, but I think you couldn't have Walter Matto in a part like that because it's too ugly. And I heard rumours about four years ago, and I'm glad the rumours turned out to be a load of rubbish, as they were talking about remaking that. Can you imagine them remaking it nowadays? I think they can't remake it because... The humour about two guys dressed as women for the time, it was taken as a joke. They didn't do it, but they basically, even the two of them, highlighted the fact is some of the things that women go through that guys don't even think about, even guys like themselves don't even think about. But nowadays, taking out all the gender recognition stuff but the just the fact is the humor at laughing at the guys or the way they treat the women would be just out of there but i'm glad it never came to anything it was about four years ago so maybe five 2018 2019 i with it heard the rumor i was hoping to god it was just somebody just trying to wind me up because we were obviously talking about some like it or and they'd, they'd said, oh, do you hear they're actually talking about a remake? And I I just didn't even want to look it up just to see if I was if they were just winding me up or not. I just assumed they were winding me up. But we a rumour like that, and you could imagine they were actually starting to do all the remakes. And you thought, no, but it's a movie it can never remade. There's some movies out there, Blazing Saddles, they can't remake that today. Things like that. There's certain movies that can be made. And she was, she had the beauty and the sweetness of character. She just basically, even though she looked like a, the typical blonde bombshell, she always came across, even some of the other ones where she came across with sweetness and she wasn't the dumb blonde. She Because even in this, she sort of classed herself as the dumb blonde in it. But you look at it when she's trying to chat up the millionaire. She's got the intelligence. She knows the difference between the varsity and she knows about the different schools. Even though some of it was from the two characters, uh, Daphne and Josephine, she could still carry a conversation even with someone who didn't know what he's talking about and throw out words. She was actually throwing it out there as well. So I think she did definitely had that type of character. Yeah, Jack Lemon is just superb. One of these days, we'll just need to do a Jack Lemon stream as well because there's certain movies or certain actors you could just do a stream talking about. <coughs> Even some bit part actors, you could do that. I quite agree. No remakes. Never, never. It is. I'd say... Um, I didn't realise that. I thought they had actually appeared in some other stuff. Not actually as stars together, but appeared together. But there you go. Nine song composed. Right. Right. What were the four song? I mean, you, there was the last one. Um, well, she sang the Melancholy one. Um, then she sang the Betty Boot one. And there was two others. 
Yeah. The very first one where she's singing, she's playing a ukulele and the one when she's going out on her first date. I thought it was only three, but I, when I think back on it, it actually definitely does. Anyway, this movie, it's just, it's a great musical, even though there's not a lot of music in it, but there is some. It's a great comedy. It's a great gangster movie. It's a great, love story as well There's, this covers so many genres and it's just a wee bit from everything and it just works so well that it's amazing I'm just actually trying to see something here um, let's get, take that back it's IMDB, just something caught my eye I'm actually just trying to see it so I need to actually fire in there, hold on a wee sec just something that popped up and I thought that can't be true So, Norma Jean is her date of birth. That's June the 1st. It was June the 1st. I thought somebody had actually put it, it was actually March the 1st. I thought it was actually coming up, but it's not. It's just it's an old article. It just so happened to pop up. But, yes, Norma Jean Mortensen from Los Angeles County. But it just goes to show someone who had such an ordinary life, as she always put it, started off as just a, your norma, norma Jean. It just plays it so well. Right, what's this? What's this? But the good thing is, Peter, the, yes, I like to re-watch things when I'm reviewing them, but a lot of the stuff I was actually watching, I remembered, because the story was so compelling that, yeah, you, you may have actually seen it a year ago, five years ago, but there's still a lot of the movie, when you're talking about it, it flashes back. You know what I mean? So, let's see... Jack Lehman and Toda Curve put two films together, Some Like It Hot and The Great Race. The Great Race, that was the one with um, Terry Thomas as uh, playing the Dick Dastardly type character. Or was that Monte Carlo or Bust I'm thinking of? You need to remind me of that one. Great race, I'll need to actually get a reminder on what that one is. It is the um, there is a few movies that there's a lot of movies I love. Yeah, I mean, and um, there's a few movies I watch regularly, they're on my schedule once or twice a year some of them three or four times a year like Judge Dredd is on three or four times a year but there's certain things I watch every year White Christmas for once, that's my Christmas movie obviously um, my New Year movie is It's a Wonderful Life but a fun movie if I just want to sit back, relax this goes on if I want a bit of stupid humour or more macabre humour, there's different ones. So, like, if I'm wanting a more macabre, um, zany humour, I'll put on Ash v. The Evil Dead or one of the three movies, usually Army of the Dead, because I find that funnier rather than the other two, which I find gory funny, whereas Army of the Dead is just stupid zany funny. But, which, talking about that, This is for my Saturday box opening. It's actually going to be my pick of the week. I've not even opened it, look. So stay tuned for that for Saturday. That's a special one. 
came through today. I was hoping it would be turning up before Friday, and it turned up today. So, yes. And I didn't even open it because I want to wait until Saturday for my pick of the week to open it because that's the only thing I'm opening for my pick of the week, even though I've got a box full of stuff there. That stuff's getting less. That's what I'm expecting in that is going to be my pick of the week. So you need to stay tuned on Saturday for that one. Anywho, those magnificent men in the flying machine. I love that movie. See, I like those ones like the Monte Carlo or Boss, the Magnificent Men, the Flying Machines. Is the Great Race, is that the same one? Was the Great Race the same one that I'm thinking of? It's a similar idea to, along to the lines of Monte Carlo or Bust. It's basically wacky races. And Terry Thomas played the Dick Dastardly character. I'm trying to remember who. The guy actually rode with him always reminded me of Peter Laurie. He always played his motley character who was always, shh, but it was near, he's a smaller guy, black hair, but he always reminded me of Peter Laurie. I can't even remember his name. But sidetrack, sidetrack. The, um, I'll need to actually check out The Great Race. No, a mad, 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 mad world was the one when they're trying to find the treasure and they're all trying to run the drive to it. That one had Macaroni and that in it. And that's when they end up under the big W with the trees. And remember, they're actually at the end, they're actually trying to count who is, who's to get the gold. And I'm trying to remember the character. He went one, two. He started himself, went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he says, hey, you count to yourself twice. He says, no, I counted him twice because he found it. And he tried to, I mean, I'm trying to remember. It's Mad, Mad, Mad World, Wacky, uh, sorry, Mad World, um, Monte Carlo or Bus, Magnificent Men in a Flying Machine. Those are all type of movies where... It basically had a similar pre premise. It was just a case of a race and fun things happened. Because I remember the um, Tony Curtis in it, he played the, did he not play a, almost not so much a spoiled brat, but a, a rich young guy who was out to make his way, and if that's a great race, or I keep not think it's the Monte Carlo or Bust. But he's only to the... Uh, get it there, I can't even remember it off the top of my head <laughs> yeah see, the thing is there's a couple of movies over the last well, actually, there's only one movie over the last five years I think I've actually found fun to, if you include Boss Level, was the one with Bruce Campbell, and that was um, Black Friday. It was about the alien one, but it was Bruce Campbell, so anything with Bruce Campbell is always fun. But in the last 20 years, there's a few movies I think are good, comedy-wise. However, the further you go back, the more. I think from the fifth, late 50s to the late 80s were the golden age for hu very good humorous comedy where it didn't take itself seriously, where it actually just was fun for the sake of fun. So they would have a laugh and a joke with different people, different characters. You would always see one of the Scotsmen would be wearing a kilt and stuff like that. You would always see um, a typical American. He would always be the cowboy type. He would always have the cowboy hat and all that. It the 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 exaggerated ones. So you would always have certain like the German one. They would always have chaps on or something like that. Whereas they, nobody took anything seriously, and they just didn't actually look at how. They didn't take offence to it. And a, another one, 
<clears throat> I meant to say Little Napoleon. Now, I need to get this name right because I can never get it as as Nemir Persov. He's been in quite a few. I recognise his face, but I could never remember how to pronounce his name. N e h e m i a h. Nehemir Persov, I think, is the correct pronunciation of his surname. First name, I've probably absolutely murdered that name, which I do apologise because great actor, but he, even in this is little Napoleon when he would do this, the God, you know, then get then he would do the he always gets himself away, but we actually think you need to be strong. But he gets it, and I mean, it was that. It was basically he's doing his flip flop of the gangsters and stuff like that, and turning his heat, the big enormous hearing aid down. To me, <coughs> there was not many characters in this that didn't work. Even the side characters, like the booking agents, right at the beginning, where they're getting in and out. The he's. The girl who had stood up for a date because he was out having a date with another girl and then tried to smooth her back into getting his, what he wanted. And then you've got the booking agent who's trying to book the females and he's just because oh, you're, the, the, you're the wrong shape, your hair's colour's wrong, you're the wrong, you, they're looking for women and it's they have to, the characterisation in each of them even if they were only in for a couple of minutes, were, were really good. So, let's see what else have we got on. Well, she's crazy. It's not your fault. You know what I mean? She doesn't think it's funny. Well, keep her away from Monte Carlo or Bus or it's um, those magnificent men are flying machines Things like that. Just don't let her watch them because if she says they're no funny, then you know she actually is nuts. So <clears throat> this is actually going to be a quick one. How's that for bad? Because when I'm talking to myself, I seem to either talk too fast or just push it all out there and get it over and done with and then go, um, 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 but. All I can say is, as they said, or as would you call them said, Spat said, I'm just digging out the quote so I don't mess it up, because I hate a messed up quote. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Do, 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 do. One of my favourite quotes in the movie, and it was one of Spats' ones. No, it wasn't. The favourite quote in the movie is a sugar quote, is story of my life. I always get the fuzzy end of the lollipop. And when I'm doing a stream on my own, it's a story of my life. I always get the fuzzy end of the lollipop. So I can talk and talk and talk, but eventually I start repeating myself. And I can talk and talk and talk, but eventually I start repeating myself. And then I can talk and talk and talk, but eventually I start... Right, we'll get on with the show and we'll finish off. So, who needs a... She does need a humour transplant. I thought you were actually going to say, I needed a humour transplant. I, oi, 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 oi. Anyway, thank you for joining us. This hides my baldy head a lot better. And I might actually start wearing, I keep on thinking I'm going to start wearing the hat because I got pulled up. I was on a, a work call today and um, my iron brew hat was sitting just at my shoulder. And one of the guys leaned forward and says, does that say what I think it says? And you remember my iron brew hat? It sort of said, I says, yes. He says, well, make sure if you're on a, a Teams call with one of the bosses, he can't see that behind you. So I had to put it away. So Considering I do like to wear my hats and I get a chance to, I've had my pork pie hat on, I've had my bowler hat on, I think even I had my cowboy hat on. 
there is a few other hats I might actually start digging out and start wearing my hat a week. Need something to actually make me look interesting rather than anything else. And you know what they say? If I can't smart up, I might smart off. Anyway, I'm going to finish up there. So thank you all for joining us. It is, I know, a very quick talk about it. The review of this movie is... If you don't like some like it hot, then some like it mental. It is a good, funny, musical gangster movie. It covers so many genres, it is unreal. Marilyn Monroe is hot in this. Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis are hilarious. And George Raft is George Raft in this. He is very scary. He plays the typical gangster. And he's the type of gangster you don't want to bump into. And then you've got... Um, what is it? I keep forgetting the guy's name. Who played Osgood, Oswald. Um, Joe E. Brown. It's just humorous in it. He's played some crazy characters because of the way he can distort his face there is a lot of good characters in this there's a lot of good humour in this it's a good love story it's a good gangster movie it's a good musical all round it is a great movie so what I would do if I was you and lucky you you know me so at least just 50-50 on that one I would go and see if you can get it Good thing is, I've already got it. I don't even need to go and find a streaming service. The, th the bad thing is, there's no extras with this one, which is just unfortunate. It is just the movie. It's a, It's got the thea uh, theatrical trailer, and that is it. So it is a shame they didn't have any extras, because I would love to have seen some behind the scenes, some outtakes, some even documentary about the three star, uh, talking to the stars about it. Even if it's only a case of it might have been just Jack Lemon or Tony Curtis talking about making it and working with Marilyn Monroe because obviously we know what happened to poor Marilyn. But I would love to see more on the DVD. So if they ever re-release it and they actually add things, documentaries and bits and pieces about it, I'm going to get it. So, until next week, which we are doing Groundhog Day next week. So, join us for that. But, join us on Saturday for Let's Talk Geeky, where you'll have myself, hopefully Roman, you'll have Colin, hopefully Windology, hopefully uh, Kelly Inch, and you never know, there's a good wee box to be opened which is going to be a nice surprise to me as well. I know what's in it, but I know what's in it. Does the Nestle mean I know the how good it looks or anything about it? Because I've only seen pictures of it. So you know what pictures can do? My wife saw the picture of me and she thought I was handsome. <laughs> and then she met me. But that's a different story. So until next week, Remember, ladies and gents, I ain't old. I'm classic. PJ may be out. Mm -hmm.